Welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we're gardening here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today I'd like to share with you a very easy DIY project to create this cute little bubbler fountain in your garden. Very inexpensive, easy, and you can let your imagination run wild. Come along with me and let's see how we do it. Now I got the idea for this bubbler fountain from Robbie from Southern California and I will link to Robbie's YouTube channel. Um, she has hundreds or maybe even a thousands of hummingbirds and other pollinators in her garden and she has so many great ideas for how to attract and um, delight really the hummingbirds and butterflies and things in your garden. So thank you Robbie for the suggestions. Um, and I'm putting it here in this section of the garden because this is where primarily, first of all, this is pretty much the only full sun area that we have in the backyard. And I wanted to put something out here for the pollinators to gather water because they have lots of nectar plants here that they're using and I love watching them, but there wasn't a water source here for them. So this is just another thing. It adds beauty to the garden and it provides a little bit of support to the native wildlife that's in our area. This was really easy and inexpensive to put together. I did it last night in my kitchen in about 15 minutes. So let me show you the steps. The supplies you need for this project are fairly simple and straightforward. You need a watertight container, something that doesn't have a hole in the bottom. You need some sort of lid to cover your container and that lid needs to be able to have holes poked into it. So either something that you can drill or something that you can like uh, use a hot um, metal skewer or something to melt a hole through it or something like that. I have two different options for my lid and I'm not sure which one I'm gonna use yet. You also need a solar operated water pump. I bought this on Amazon. It was about $15, maybe a little bit less. Make sure you get the kind where the pump is connected via a long cord to the solar panel so that you don't have to have the solar panel in the fountain itself. You need some sort of tubing to connect from the pump, which will be at the bottom of your container, up to the lid. You can either use clear tubing like this or if you can find a straw that is the right size, that's great, or any other sort of tubing material that you can find, but it needs to fit snugly on the pump. So I took my pump to the pet store and I bought this aquarium tubing and it fits in there really tight, but I have to kind of jam it in there. Um, so I could use this. Um, and this straw also works. It's a little bit different of a fit, but it would work um, nicely as well. Just find a tubing material that fits your pump. And that's really all you need, but if you want to decorate it and make it more pretty, um, you could get some sort of decorative material to put on the top. I have these marbles. These are fully round marbles that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I have, I think, five bags of them in blues and greens. And so that's what I'm gonna to use to decorate the top of my container. I'm not sure which of these lids I'm going to use yet. This one is clear and I like that from the aesthetic point of view. If I put these clear marbles on top of here, I think it'll be really pretty with the clear bottom. The problem with this lid is that it's curved on its edge and it doesn't really fit here very nicely. And I'm worried that if some sort of um, pressure came down on the top of it, that it would actually cave in like that. Like if a squirrel tried to sit on it, or a chipmunk or even a heavy bird sitting on the edge of that, it would probably fall in. And so this one, while I think it would be prettier, I think I'm not gonna use this one. I think I'm gonna use the black one because it has a more solid lip on it. And so if I put it in there, and even if a heavy squirrel came and sat on it, it won't fall in. So I'm going to use this for my top. The first step is to put a hole in the center that will fit the tubing. Now the tube looks to be, let's see, the label says, it doesn't say what its diameters are. I don't know how big it is. So I could use a drill and I could drill a hole, or what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use a metal skewer or you could use a screwdriver and I'm gonna heat this up on my gas stove burner and I'm gonna use it 
to um, burn a hole in there. Now I don't want to make it too big because if I make the hole too big then my tubing will fall out. So I'm going to start small and only grow it bigger as I think I need to. All right, so I've put a hole in by using my hot metal skewer. Um, I think this is not too big for my tubing, but I'm actually gonna let this cool down before I stick it on there because I don't wanna melt this. So, yeah. All right, so that was a great fit and it's nice and tight. It's uh, kind of, got some tension there so that's good so it won't easily fall out so that's great okay so I, I can take this out for just a minute now I need to so if the water comes up out of there and spouts out I need a way for the water to go back down into the reservoir so that it can recycle so I'm going to poke a lot of holes into this plate using the same method of my hot skewer and um, I don't know exactly how many holes I'm going to need so I'm just going to put I don't know some in there and then I'll test it with water and then if it needs more holes I'll put more holes in. I don't know if you can see it very well but like this hole here and this one and this one have a little lip there that I'm worried is going to impede the water flow back down into the bottom. So I poked more holes from the back toward the front that don't have those little lips there. Okay, so now my um, top plate is prepared. The water will come up through this piping, through this hole, just like that. And then the water will spout up and then it will drip down onto this plate and, and then it will drip down through these holes on the plate into the reservoir and be recycled. Now, one last thing I need to do before I can put this all together. I, uh, I need to have the solar pump on the outside of the container collecting sun and I need to have the pump on the inside of the container to, to get this cord out going from the pump to the solar panel. I'm just going to have it come up and then out the side and down. But I, if, I do, if I leave it like that, then this will be unstable. And I don't want that to be unstable. So I'm actually going to melt a little bit of a U-shape right here on the side of the container so that I have a place to fit this cord down um, and then put this on here nice and snug. Okay, so I have a nice U-shaped indentation right here along the edge of my container and that will allow me to put this cord here. And then I just put the lid on top. And this is going to be nestled down in among plants. And so from the front side, I can't see it, but even from the back side, it will be mostly hidden around leaves and, and branches of plants. Okay, so now it's time to assemble the, uh, the fountain and I'm going to put on my tubing onto the pump. All right, I'll put my pump down in the bottom of my container. And then I need to, I'm just gonna trim this off. I don't need all of this length here. All right, now I need to feed this up through my plate. Make sure that's in this little snuggy place. There we go. All right, so that is connected. Now, if I were to take this out and put it in the sun right now, it would try to pump water. There's no water in there yet. But. And we're getting ready to have a thunderstorm. So this is, this is like really the worst time, the worst day to try to do this project because there's no sun to power my pump yet. But anyway, this is how you connect it together. And now what I'll be able to do is put in my marbles. I have five bags of marbles from the Dollar Tree. 
and my thought is that this will be pretty and it'll give butterflies and hummingbirds some place to stand out of the water while still taking advantage of the water itself. Okay, so there we go. And now this is, when this is full of water, this will be very heavy. And even without any water in it, the marbles, they are really heavy and so they keep the lid in place really nicely. I mean, I really can't go any further until it's time to put it outside, fill it with water and turn it on. So yeah, join me very soon and I'll be able to do that once this thunderstorm passes through, maybe tomorrow. Okay, so I'm having a little bit of trouble thinking about this black lid. I really wish it were a clear lid because I think it would be prettier. Would it? Let me pour these into there and see if it is prettier. Okay, I'm not using the clear one. All right, so I think I'll leave it like this until I can get outside, fill it with water, and get it in the sun so that it can turn on. So I'll meet you outside. Okay, it's the next morning. The thunderstorms have passed. By the way, we got a third of an inch of rain. Woohoo, we haven't had any significant rain in a long time. That was very welcome. Anyway, here we are on a bright sunny morning now and it's time to install the bubbler fountain that we're putting in. And I don't know whether to call this a fountain or a bird bath or a, a butterfly bath, I don't know. But the idea is that it's shallow, it has moving water, and it'll provide beauty for us and a sound for us and water for the wildlife, whether it's birds or butterflies or bees who need a drink or whatever. So, all right, so I've got all my stuff here. I'm gonna be planting, planting, I'm gonna be placing this structure into the middle of the flower bed here on this side of the arbor so that it's near the plants where the pollinators have been going crazy lately. So. Okay, so in terms of supplies, all I need really is my uh, container the lid that I prepared with the, um, the hose coming up through the center of it connected to the um, solar panel. I need water to fill my container with. I've got two bricks here that I'm going to use to kind of level the space where I'm setting my container. And then I have my decorative uh, top. So these are the marbles that I'm going to be putting on the, on the top plate. You could also use rocks. You could also leave it plain. It's really up to you. I'm trying to try these marbles and see how they work. I'm going to be placing the fountain right here on, uh, in between the, um, what is that? Summer Crush Hydrangea and these penstemon that I recently picked up on sale. I'm gonna put it right in there. Now, it can't stay there forever because these plants and this shrub are going to grow bigger, but I think for the rest of this season, that'll be a fine spot for it. Okay, so the old-fashioned of leveling, old-fashioned way of leveling. I can see that there's more room, more room over here on this side of the container than there is over here. That means the container's leaning down. It needs to come up this way a little bit. While this is not exactly perfect, I'm going to say this is good enough for today. So now all I have to do is put the pump in. Now you can notice that I have the solar panel upside down because I do not want the pump to start working yet until I get it into the water. Okay, so I've got the pump in there. I'm gonna put the cord through its little exit gate um, groove right there. And now I'll just put that on top of there. Good. And now when I turn this over to collect sunlight, the pump should start running. <gasps> 
It did. Okay. Is the water going down through? Yeah. So this isn't really standing up very straight and tall, is it? Maybe if I... There we go. That's more what I want. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. The water is returning back down in. And so let me... All right, so the water level is going to vary based on where the sun is on the panel. So that's just a little thing to know about it. All right, let me get the marbles on here. So that's all there was to it. It was pretty easy. And you know what? Even if birds or butterflies don't use this for a water source, it still is pretty. And it sounds nice from our uh, decking platform over there. And it's just a nice little addition to the garden. So maybe you'll be inspired to do one for your garden as well. And by the way, go ahead and go over to Robbie's channel and look at all of the examples she has over there. It's amazing. She's got so many great ideas. Thank you, Robbie, for this idea in my garden. And thank you all for watching and, and thanks for visiting Harmony Hills Home and Garden. If you haven't yet, please subscribe so that we can be friends and we can share ideas over the rest of the gardening season. Um, have a wonderful day, friends. I'm gonna sit here and see if I can attract some butterflies. Bye.